this regional finale between the defending national champs, Penn State, and the Big 12, Big 10 champs, excuse me, Wisconsin. And we are underway here in Louisville, Kentucky. Ayanna Whitney, dug up by Maury. Down the middle, Nia Grant. Penn State draws first blood. And they draw it down the middle, which is not a good sign for the Badgers because this Penn State team is so physical in those middle matchups that they've got to create some out-of-system looks and force balls out to the pen. Mike Hancock had three service aces last night in the matchup versus UCLA. And we traded off a couple of kills here. That's Dominic Thompson, who last night set a career-best seven blocks versus Ohio State in that five-set thriller between the two Big Ten foes. Back to serve now for Wisconsin. Taylor Moore, the libero. Timo, the junior from Muncie, Indiana. Ali Franti, one of the freshmen. Eight of them for Penn State. Block is there for the Nittany Lions. They go back and over the block. This time goes Kelly Bates, who had 12 kills and 17 digs for six double-double last night. This is a tall order for the 5'11", Kelly Bates. She's blocked the first time. They go right back to her, and she's able to score on that second swing, does not back away. This time, serve a little long for Maury. Service error. I think you have to expect to see a few of those from Wisconsin because in order to challenge Penn State's physicality, they have to be very aggressive at the service line. That is their only chance of disrupting what's one of the best side-out offenses in this country. Had 11 service errors yesterday, Wisconsin did versus Ohio State, who made it a very uncomfortable match, which was the game plan for Jeff Carlston and company. Ball kept alive for the Nittany Lions, and kept alive on the other side by Maury, who had the second touch. Down the middle again, Mia Grant. Two kills for the senior. Here we see Nia Grant again, and the game plan is becoming very obvious. Last night, Penn State flooded the right side. We saw all kinds of balls to Ayanna, Whit Ayanna Whitney on the right side and to Haley Washington running the slide. Early going here, it's down the middle. Bates. This time, Ayanna Whitney off the block. Out of bounds, point for the Badgers as Carlina goes back to serve. Credit Haley Nelson. She could have easily given up on this play, but she makes a strong move to her left and drops that right hand. Lauren Carlini, Big Ten Player of the Year, Big Ten Setter of the Year, the service error there. And it is a battle between her and Micah Hancock and has been the case since these two have met up. This will be the final matchup collegiately for these two top setters in the Big Ten and in the country. They're both so good. Maybe the question is, will they play within themselves this evening and not try to do too much? Off the block and out of bounds. Point for the Badgers. Tied up at four apiece here in this opening set. In a rematch of our national title match a year ago as Kelly Bates is back to serve, the freshman from Illinois. And that's the first look at Washington, who is stuffed. And not, should say, Haley Washington did not see action in the first matchup versus Penn State in the regular season. Not just the first look for her tonight, but the first look for Wisconsin in real time against that phenom freshman, the freshman of the year in the Big Ten. She does get it down just inside the line. So picks up her first kill here of the evening. Had 12 kills at 526 yesterday in the matchup versus UCLA. Had four blocks. She's got a 494 hitting percentage. And as Russ Rose said about her, she is everything as advertised coming in as a number one recruit in the country. Bates dug up by Gonzalez. Washington on the slide this time and the antenna. So the point will go to Wisconsin. And a perfect opportunity to point out the fact that the ball must travel over the, travel over the net between the antennas. And that if it does contact the antenna, that is out of bounds. That what ha that's what happens on the slide play by Haley Washington. It's Haley Nelson to serve. Had a not-so-good match for her yesterday. The negative numbers for most of that match. Dig there by Bates. Saved by Carlini. Free ball. Set Washington right at Carlini. And again, the antenna to the point this time will go.
team Penn State. That far antenna pretty involved here early in this match. Two balls, one from each team into the antenna already. Early in that rally, Wisconsin picked up a second ball attack from Micah Hunt Hancock. That was a huge pickup for them because in the first meeting between these two teams, Micah had nine kills. Celebration there. Initially, I thought there was going to be an ace for Megan Courtney, and it ended up being just that. Megan Courtney, the junior from Denton, Ohio, and somebody who talked to Selima Rockwell, the associate head coach for Penn State, said she was blessed with every skill in the book, can pass, set, play defense, probably be a setter and libero. She has six kills, eight digs yesterday, and she picks up the ace there. Welcome those of you joining us here, a rematch of last year's national championship rematch between Penn State and Wisconsin. The pancake there by Fuller, and the point will go to Wisconsin, but this is a battle of heavyweights. Wisconsin has not beaten Penn State since 2011 back in Madison. It's been six straight victories in the series for Penn State here, and today Kelly Sheffield for Wisconsin, a chance to slay the Dragon to advance Penn State. Loaded again this season. Four seniors and a couple of big-time freshmen. Run right there and Allie Franti. And this is just a breath-stopping moment as the Big Ten Player of the Year, Lauren Carlini, the quarterback of this entire Wisconsin offense, is on the floor and very slow to get up. Carlini, we should say, has been battling plantar fasciitis in her foot interestingly just years ago on this court as you see she comes down and lands on franti whose momentum carried her under the net this is the most common injury you see in volleyball franti down first her foot on top of franti but interestingly that this would happen to lauren carlini just a couple of years ago melissa you happened were to micah here hancock. when micah hancock was injured sure. in this same building and same thing happened to micah hancock here at the yum center in the National semifinals two years ago injured her ankle early in that matchup in the semifinal. She was unable to block and really play her game. And Carlini hoping she can come back here in this match as we are tied up at one in set number one between Penn State and Wisconsin. National championship match a year ago. Won the Big Ten this season after finishing 19-1. The, the one blemish coming at the hands of Penn State. And Julie now in the match, inserted into left front. She is a 5'10 junior out of LaGrange, Illinois. She has played in nine sets. Make sure you understand that. That is not nine matches this season, only nine sets. As Aaron Julie quarterback to the offense for the Wisconsin Badgers here in the regional finals. Her name has been called. Julie. That's a big swing out of the back row by Megan Courtney, who has the ability to do it all for Penn State. But interestingly, I see him corrected. Look Thomas. at what Washington, look at what Wisconsin has done. Thomas, who set her first two years at Wisconsin, was in the back row. So she is now setting from the back row. It's Julie who we will see hitting across the front row. Will they move into a 6-2? That's yet to be seen. Meaning will Thomas set when she gets to the front row, or will she become an attacker? So there's still a few variables out there for Wisconsin. It has been a bit of a luxury for Coach Sheffield and company with Courtney Thomas, again, as you mentioned, who had played setter and could come in and run the offense if Carlini had to dig. And as he said, they're always in rhythm. As we take a look at Russ Rose, the head coach for Penn State, a Hall of Fame head coach in his 36 seasons, six national championships, five-time national coach of the year, with a very young squad this year, eight freshmen, six of those freshmen have seen playing time, and a few of them big time on the court for the team this year. Allie Franti, one of them. Haley Washington, another one. Again, making her first appearance in a match versus Wisconsin. And when Micah Hancock serves one, uh, serves one out of bounds, you have certainly dodged a bullet. This is the player who leads the entire nation, 122 total aces on the season. You almost want to hold your breath and hope it goes out of bounds when she goes back to the service line. So Lori with a service error. That's another service error for her here today. That was her second trip back to the service line. Allie Franti 
will rotate out. And for her to serve as Kendall Pierce. But as a former center yourself for the Florida Gators, what does this do to a team to see not only the center go out, but your leader? Yeah, I think, obviously, as the Big Ten Player of the Year, the center of the year, this is a huge loss. But as you said, Wisconsin, maybe more than any other team, has an incredible luxury in that they have a senior on their team who set her first two seasons at Wisconsin. She has experience to draw from. He said, Kelly, he said she has the most unique set of talents, skills in this country, and they are certainly being utilized here tonight. And Kelly Bates helping her out across the front row on that overdig, the big swing from the freshman outside who was very young early in the season when these two teams met up. She's grown up. She's grown up a lot over the course of this season. I think she was antsy to get a second shot at Penn State. And how about KT Cabas back at the service line? Was a spark for this team yesterday in that five-setter. 11 aces for her, three last night. And Penn State takes her off the line. Mia Grant continues to have her way at the net, but the good news for Wisconsin fans, there was a touch on that one. So they're starting to catch up with the speed of Mia Grant. If they can touch balls, those are going to be quality contacts that allow them to dig that. We have gone back and forth already 10 ties in this first set. And over on to Courtney Thomas. Pick it up right where she left off. It's like riding a bike, you don't forget. A little offensive with a set as you take a look at Carlini, who's hopping around, bouncing around. And as you said, Missy, the expectation is she will be back into this matchup. Season is on the line. And this is a Wisconsin team that, for the first time starting last year under Coach Kelly Sheffield, believed that they could win Big Ten championships, win, perhaps win a national championship, could be All-Americans. A team that very much plays together rally so far. The back set. Slide maybe Courtney there. Swing it out to Chapman. Courtney Thomas does continue to set across the front row for Wisconsin and she certainly does a fine job of it. She shoots this one outside to Ellen Chapman. One of those players in particular who coach challenge. She said, hey, have you ever thought about being an All-American? She said, no, I actually haven't. And if you hear the volume in the building increasing, it's because Lauren Carlini has returned to the floor. Back set, Kenkoff. To Whitney, and Whitney with the attack error. She was a big part of the victory yesterday over UCLA. 13 kills at 571, only one error in that match. Back-to-back -back errors from Penn State, and you just don't see that very often. In fact, Micah Hancock said yesterday in the press conference after their match, as Coach tells us, it's a game of errors, and if you make the fewest, much better chance of winning. 5-1 run for Wisconsin as they lead Penn State by three here in set one powerful service team and you know they have all the athletes up front so much physicality take care of the pass that's the thing for them if they take care of the pass they can run that offense with ease Megan Courtney and the block there from Wisconsin and Courtney Thomas now how about this test so Carlini left when it was tied at eight all but came back in with Wisconsin up 13 to 12 you know sometimes adversity brings out our very best and that might be the case for Courtney Thomas you know she's put in a position she's called on to set this is a player who struggled against Penn State. In the national final a year ago, she had one kill. In the earlier meeting between these two teams, one kill. She has not been her best against Penn State. Sometimes that adversity just brings out the fighter in you. And right now, that's what we're seeing from Wisconsin. As Coach Sheffield said with those one kills for each of those matches, he needs to do a better job of putting her in a better position to be successful. As you saw Haley Nelson there trying to... Get rid of the match from yesterday. Again, hit negative numbers, but looking pretty good so far early on. Haley is by no means going to out-jump Haley Washington on the other side of the net, the two Haley's, and so a really smart play set to run her along the net and give her some space to swing. Megan Courtney will come out for Penn State and in to serve for her. Lainey Pierce, the sister of Kendall Pierce, who comes in for a Franti, a freshman. One of the eight freshmen for this Penn State squad. 
High school was a center libero and outside hitter. Trying to find a place for her. And a roll on this Penn State squad as you see the dig there by Gonzalez. Washington on the slide. Swing it out to Chapman. Great save by Fuller to keep that one alive for Penn State. Franti, block, there. The touch by Thompson and the save by Thomas. And how about the save by Gonzalez on the other side? Fuller, free ball. And finally, Wisconsin and Courtney Thomas terminate. Senior Courtney Thomas means business. She's playing with a lot of heart right now, blocking balls, allowing more Carlini behind her a little less movement on a very sore left ankle. Just in front of me moments ago, she's still massaging that ankle, moving very gingerly. Take a little momentum away with a service error there in Wisconsin. Had 11 of them yesterday. And the match at Coach Sheffield said they played very tight. They were not relaxed. And just the opposite for Penn State, we saw them a very relaxed team against UCLA. Soft touch there. Thompson. It's an over the free ball. Back set. Brandt. Dug up by Thomas. Block there. How about Hancock and Grant? The duo out there on the right side. Hancock, really a smaller block on this Penn State lineup, but no less effective. She sets it up. Mia Grant closes. I think Mia Grant got all of that one. Gonzalez, Sam Libero, Penn State. Ellen Chapman had a fantastic match last night, picking up where she left off with that kill. Three so far here today. Coach said we'll have to be a little creative with our speed because of the fact that Penn State for so physical, outsizes them. That's one of the ways to be creative with your speed. Runs to Ellen Chapman in a little bit on a fast set. She went straight for Courtney Thomas. She's been making Courtney there. Did by Courtney. Over on two goes Hancock. Give it to the Denny Lions. Hancock is so crafty, so competitive. I mean, this is just so outside the box. Some of the things she does, moving along the net there, just sending one over. Well, associate head coach Lena Rockwell said, you know, the fact that she's a great server is just icing on the cake, but she is a fantastic setter. And everybody needs to know that. And how good she has gotten, as you see her go a little wide there on the serve. But they need to understand just how good she has become over her course of time over at Penn State. Missed those last two serves in a row, and you get the feeling these players are pretty amped up. As the second service here for Hancock here today, Diana Whitney goes down off some fingertips and out of bounds. Penn State just continues to work the middle of the court. Different personnel, same result. Ayana Whitney plays right side for Penn State early in the season. When these two teams met, though, she was actually playing in the middle before Washington was in the lineup. So she's very capable of that quick set down the middle of the floor. Two-point edge for Wisconsin here in set number one in Louisville. Overpass. Back set, Whitney. Whitney. Takes it across the court and gets it down. And that's really not even a hard hit ball from Ayanna Whitney, but you see the athleticism when she goes up and over the block. She's so hard to defend. And you have to give credit there to Carlini diving to make that set and then the termination by Kelly Bates to get it to go. Diving on that bad ankle, you can see there as she moves with the ball prior to service, she is still just putting as little weight on that left foot as possible. But I'll tell you what, Kelly Bates digs them out of a hole there, finding the edge of the block, something that Wisconsin said they had worked on, going off the edge of that block, that's exactly what Kelly Bates does. Straight to Franti on that serve, and make it for me. Terminal. Good look at Lauren Carlini. You can just tell she comes down gently, definitely favoring that left side. Carlini over on two. 
find some open real estate. We've got a little game of anything you can do, I can do better between the back-to-back -back setters of the year in the Penn State, Micah Hancock, a year ago, Long Carlini this year, stealing that award from her, and both are very offensive-minded. Both of these setters had three kills yesterday, and the last matchup between these two, Hancock had nine kills. Soft touch goes Chapman. Set by Gonzalez. And you're looking for fingertips there. Ayana Whitney calling for it, but no, it will not get the call. Just along, Courtney Thomas flies in early in this rally to save a tip. Gives her team another chance, and sometimes you just got to stay in it long enough. And it forces the air up because you didn't realize what was going to happen today is that she wasn't going to be doing that out of system. She was going to actually become the setter for a time, and she did it very well. She is somebody that has stepped up over the course of time, and a lot of different faces in new places this season for Wisconsin. Danny Morales, who was an outside hitter a year ago, now playing in a DS role. Courtney Thomas, again, who was a setter, moved over to the right side, and no complaints from anybody. Exactly. And that is what has made this team so special, according to Kelly Sheffield. Everybody is all in. Kelly Bates to serve now for Wisconsin. Coach said they've chosen the we over the me. That'll go down as an ace for the freshman. Kelly Bates making the case for her freshman of the year uh, candidacy. I mean, she has really played so well both last night and here at the start of this one. It plays with absolutely no fear. This is a player who coach said, I just didn't know if her size would allow her to compete in this league, and it certainly has not been a problem. Set point for the Badgers. Down the middle was Ayanna Whitney. Carolini swings it out. Block is there. The save by Chapman. Free ball. Back set again to Ayanna Whitney, and she terminates. A couple of errors from Ayanna Whitney, but when they had to have her, it was not a problem. A nice delivery by Micah Hancock. Of course, in Wisconsin's middle to make the move to her left. And Ayanna Whitney wins that battle. She rotates out. Fuller back to serve. Still set point. And no. It looked like that ball had gotten through. And I think Courtney Thomas thought that it had rolled off the blocker's hands onto the Penn State side of the net. That is just so hard to see, even right here in the gym. It was hard for her to tell well, where that ball landed. That's how fast these girls are swinging. So the door cracked open a bit here for Penn State. Wisconsin and the timeout called for Kelly Sheffield to talk about this last point as we take a look at this last set. Only one ball. blocker. And Thomas thought she had gotten the swing and then had come off the blocker's hands onto Penn State side. But it was Megan Courtney who had just enough penetration on the block to keep that ball on the Wisconsin side. Really two good plays. Well, Wisconsin Badgers won 22 consecutive matches. Penn State has won 50 consecutive sets. And you go back to the last matchup and you talk about coming in and what sort of the mindset is. Well, let's talk about the mindset from the regular season matchup between these two. Kelly Sheffield said his team came in excited to have Penn State at their place. He said on the flip side, Penn State came in and they are dead set on, as he said, kicking our tails. And that's exactly what happened. Penn State beat Wisconsin in every phase of the game. Yeah, Wisconsin said, you know, we, we were very humbled, you know, that they owned us in every category. But as a coach, you know, sometimes that's not such a bad thing. Early in the season, to kind of get your lunch handed to you, go back to the drawing board for players to figure out, we still got a lot to work on. That can work to your advantage as a coach. He is the Big Ten Coach of the Year. His team won the Big Ten title. 19-1, the finish in the conference. That's the fifth Big Ten title for Wisconsin, the first since 2001. And the lion's share of the accolades, the individual accolades going to Wisconsin this season. Set point for the Badgers. Arlene down the middle. Courtney Thomas, and why not? Courtney Thomas, who had not played well against Penn State in the last two meetings, really is playing with a chip on her shoulder here today. Coach said, I have not done a good job of helping her out against Penn State. We can find some ways for her to have gaps in the block.